What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and today we have our round six review or recap. Um, 2225, so not the greatest score, very, very mediocre. Um, having to feel Durden and Hayes really screwed me over. Season rank of 13,000, it doesn't look good, but the team is looking in really good shape with these next few trades I'm going to be doing. Um, let's get into it. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well. Um, I noticed a lot of people are watching, but not many are hitting that subscribe button. So if you are interested in the weekly uploads, make sure you guys subscribe. Um, obviously, you don't have to. So let's get through the team. We'll try and do this a bit quick. So Doherty 122, really good. Bounced back nicely from the 86 that he had last week. Um, I think he's D1. Yeah, I think he's D1 now. Yep. So I think he'll be top three defenders pretty comfortably. Tom Stewart, 97. The ball just wasn't down there enough for him, unfortunately. Um, still a decent score, though. Jack Crisp, someone that went really missing, like really, really missing. Um, so very frustrating with that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, he's still pumped out a ton, so whatever. George Hewitt, 114. I don't think he's gone under 100 all year. Let me just double check to confirm. Uh, 110, sorry. No, he hasn't gone under 110 all year. He's been unbelievable. It's like, it's crazy to think how good he is. Um, yeah, just for how much we paid for him. Unbelievable. Jaden Short, 111. Did well. And Nick Dacos, 71. Whatever. I just scored 42 and DeConing on 66 on the bench. He actually played all right, DeConing. So, again, similar to the Stewart factor. The ball wasn't actually down there very much. But whatever. So, I brought in Jack McRae this week. Now, I know a lot of you guys saw I had Tom Mitchell. I changed my mind. I saw Mitchell CBAs. I thought, maybe I don't get Mitchell. We'll go with McRae. He's safe M1, plays Adelaide this week, should go large, and he goes 92. So that's very frustrating, but at the same time, I'm not really that um, annoyed because I know I have the number one mid or number two mid in the game, and I know he's going to be top three or four mids um, come season's end. So, And I've traded him for Matt Real, who actually scored more than him, which is a bit frustrating, but uh, we're playing a long game here. Jack Steele, 140. He is a jet. I think he's almost a must-have now. It's going to be hard to get him in. It's so expensive, but... Really repaid the people that held him, like myself, and a lot of people traded him out after round one or two. Um, so yeah, definitely don't trade your Uber Primos. Lockie near 108, so had him captain, a bit frustrating. Couldn't quite get up there, but whatever, it is what it is. Took Miller 99, so this was very frustrating because he just kept giving away free kicks and turnovers, so hopefully he can come good. I'm, I'm still, I still have a lot of faith in Took Miller. But it just hurts because a lot of people are going to pick him up for dirt cheap, whereas I paid, you know, 670k for him, but can't do much about it. It's still averaging 110, so it's it's definitely enough, but would like just a little bit more from him. And I think the scores are coming. They'll, they'll come. Plays Collingwood this week. I don't think they'll tag him. I think he'll run loose on them. Patrick Cripps, 139, so quite comfortable with the best player in the competition. Um, yeah, just so good. And Carlton... Can't look so bad, honestly. Like, what are they doing? You know, as soon as Pitnet goes out, they just have nothing. It's just, it's just such a shame. But yeah, I don't. I think Carlton are pretenders. It's hard to say that as a Carlton supporter, but yeah, that, that's for another day. That conversation. Will Brody, one hundred and three. Really happy with him. I think he's a keeper on the forward line. Lipinski, you are gone. I've had enough of this prick. Honestly, I genuinely have had enough of him. Um, just such dead weight. Terrible role. Terrible, terrible role. Um, terrible player as well. He just shanks it left, right, and center. I hate him. I actually hate him. Like genuinely hate that guy because I could have gotten so many better players in that round one or two, whatever it was, for Dusty. Um, and I picked this prick. The biggest trap ever. Like pumped out of one thirty. Thought he was going to be possibly like a one hundred five average, one ten average, maybe. No, biggest trap. He's gone. Uh, Nick Martin, 95, really good. So, Granny, 129. Granny's getting traded. <clears throat> now, this is funny because I know Granny got injured. That's not very funny. But the funny part is that I was going to trade Granny either way because I think Hayes' cash in is too powerful to um, give up on. And I think Pruce's scoring ability is too good to have on the bench. So, I had to get rid of one or Grundy or Wits. Wits is averaging an extra 11 points. So, it had to be Grundy. Sorry if I sound a little bit croaky this woke up, by the way. Um, and which was unbelievable, 143, by the way. So, I think he's, R, he's R2 at the moment. I think he's safe for the top three rucks. Pretty safe. Um, barring injury, obviously. Dunkley, 142, really good. Didn't set a game, but apparently it was everywhere. Butters, 58. Now, this, this hurts as well, but I, I'm going to hold him just because... Well, I don't really know why I'm going to hold him, but I am. 
Um, yeah, it's it's very frustrating. I'm not gonna lie, it's it's very frustrating. So then, um, Cogs ninety one, yeah, good sixty eight for Cherry, not great, but he plays Carlton this week. You don't have Peter Net, so he should go large. Hayes got injured, obviously Rose didn't play, so we have to field freaking Durden. And now it's time to solve some problems. So Hayes, you're gone. Um, Brody, you're coming down. Um, then we're going to trade uh, Lipinski. And we're going to trade Nick Dacos. Yep. So now what we're going to do... Oh, no, sorry, not Nick Dacos. We're going to sub Dacos down. Trade Grundy. And this is where we get the money. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring Clayton Oliver. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in Nick Vloston. And I think, you know, people are saying Vloston, maybe not. But you know what? He's got a lot of kick in. He's got a good role. And I know he's not going to get 155 every week. Melbourne might kick 21 behinds on him every single week. But I really like Vloston's role. Short and Vloston share. They chip it around a bit down there. Similar to the Hall and Zabel last year. And I think No Hooley actually really helps Vloston. Um, I know he was semi-relevant in the preseason. Um, I'm not sure why, but he was. And I can't remember... I can't remember what it was that made him relevant, but I'm pretty confident in Boston. I think you can have, I think he'd be top six, honestly. Um, bit of a stat pad as well, and he's got the intercept game. So kind of like Ridley, but actually getting kick-ins. Um, and then obviously we're going to bring in big boy Hayes. So going to make plenty of money. So these are the trades I'm doing. I'm very confident in them, honestly. Very, very confident. So we obviously bring Proust on. And this is the thing with Hayes and Cruz. So if one of them get injured, we have the other one to fall back on. As well as Cherry um, to swing up. So, well, we do have to still trade to get Cherry up. But, yeah, I'm very confident. Um, it is a little risky, Wits and Proust. And funnily enough, this is the rough combo I was going to start with. Um, had Proust not been injured. But, um, yeah, it's... I think the team's in really good shape. So we, for the captains this week, we're going to vice-captain... Um, Clayton Oliver, and we're going to captain Jack McRae. So we've got the projected of two four one four. So teams in really really good shape now, and I've sort of planned out my next few trades as well. So next week, um, I'm pretty set on one of Boke, Brayshaw, or Keys. It's probably going to be Keys at this point, and I'll tell you why because he doesn't get tagged. Um, I don't think he'll ever get tagged with. Uh, Laird in the side either, which is a really, really big bonus. Um, so we'll probably turn Dacos and Cherry into... Uh, uh, so we'll swing Nick Martin down. We'll turn him into um, Keys and Greg Clark. Should have enough for that. Um, and then the week after, we will get O'Driscoll and Nick Martin... Ideally, to a rookie defender, and this is the third spot. This M8, and I'm still tossing up. It's probably going to be Brayshaw. Uh, I don't want to settle for any of the non-Ubers. I want the absolute best eight mids, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because if we have a quick look... Let's have a quick look with just the top eight right now, based on average. Um, average, and we'll go mid. So we'll obviously have Crips in there, but Tom Green's there, Keys, Brayshaw, Boke Mills. So I think we fill it up with Keys and Brayshaw. Um, it worries me a little bit about them being able to maintain it, but I think, you know, Brayshaw does have the tag factor, but he is a jet at the same time and does stat pad. But Keys stat pads is a jet and doesn't have a tag factor. So I think we go Keys first, break even of 108. So it probably doesn't go too much further than. 600 um but yeah, that's sort of the moves i'm planning on doing and I'm, I'm, I'm lucky well i'm not lucky but like i've had some good cash gen on my team and i've really prioritized getting those big cash cows in um so yeah so we plan on keeping cherry no sorry we plan on keeping cogs butters brody dunkley i want to fill out the forward line last ideally if greg clark's good then we just get keys and then we Go maybe a handy next week, so we have that um, Greg Clark on the field. 
Um, that probably is what we'll do actually. But yeah, keys definitely next week is the is the plan. And um, yeah, I think that's I think that's what we're gonna do. So day cost out for Clark, and then Sherry out, Swing Martin down. Yep. And this is all hoping Rose's plays, and then we should have Dixon back either this week or the next week. Break even of negative twenty four, so I wouldn't be trading him out, guys. I think he's still got plenty of money to make. Um, goes up forty k if he scores sixty three. So if he pumps out another ton, um, gonna make plenty and plenty of money. So I'd be very wary trading him out. I know a lot of people are. Like you see, this like one thousand six hundred sixty seven people trading him out. Uh, people trading day costs out. Fair enough. Butters, yeah, fair enough. Durden, I mean, <laughs> whatever. McDonald. Yeah. So these people are really struggling for cash chain, these ones trading him out, I think. Or they're just trying to get cover for Roses. So fingers crossed Roses plays. I haven't really thought about what I'm gonna do if Roses doesn't play. It means we probably have to trade in like an Isaac Haney instead of a Clayton Oliver. Which is something I definitely don't want to do. I'm not gonna lie, I don't wanna do that. But yeah, pretty pretty set on Nick Loston, plenty of kick ins, rolls there. Um, let me know what you guys think about him and just my team and trades in general. And let me know how you guys went this weekend. I'll be very interested to know. Um, but hopefully a few good weeks for the, for all of us um, coming up. Because it's, it's been a bit of a struggle. But I think we can climb the rankings really hard in the next few weeks. So thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. And I'll see you in the next one.